Hi, Penny Carlson from Intro to Digital Photography. I've been enjoying seeing all your pictures on Flickr. You guys are doing a great job. Now we're ready to take your photography to a whole new level by learning how to post-process using Adobe Photoshop. This video will be part of a three video sequence and it should be watched in order. In this video, you'll learn how to organize your photographs using Adobe Bridge. And we will use Bridge to launch most of our photographs into either Adobe Camera Raw or Adobe Photoshop. In the next video, you'll learn how to post-process your photograph using just Adobe Camera Raw. And then finally, in the third video, you'll learn how to post-process your photograph using Adobe Photoshop. Now that I've got you all out there taking some great photographs and using your cameras the right way, you've got all these pictures and you've got to keep them organized. Well, I'm not going to spend too much time on organization because this is a one credit class and I want you to take great pictures, but I use Adobe Lightroom for my organization. Um, if you have an Apple, you can use Adobe Lightroom or a Apple has a great program called Aperture. You could even download Picasa if you're a poor college student and can't afford to organize your photographs any other way. But if you want to make an investment and buy the new version of Photoshop and don't want to spend any more money on photo management software, Adobe has a companion program that comes with Photoshop and that's called Adobe Bridge. If you decide to download the CS2 version, it also has a version of Adobe Bridge, although it lacks some of the features that we'll see in the newer um, Photoshop CS6 version of Adobe Bridge. Okay, so I'm going to open Adobe Bridge now. And just so we have Adobe Bridge looking just like it would if it was newly installed, I'm going to hit the Control-Alt-Shift key, and that'll uh, restore Bridge to its default settings. If you have a Mac, you can hit Command Option Shift and it'll do the same thing. And then we're all working with the same setup. So hit Control Alt Shift. Open. It'll bring up this little dialog box that says Reset Preferences. Hit OK. And now we should all be working with the same version of Bridge. All right, so it comes up and we see we've got different workspaces up here. And if you want, you can even pull this out to the left by holding down your mouse key and just dragging it. And you'll see you have some different ways you can view your folders. You can actually use Bridge to manage things besides photos if you'd like to. Folders is a good way to look at it sometimes. I tend to, when I'm just navigating my computer, I tend to either like to look at the folders view or the essentials view. So now I'm going to insert a camera card and download some photos that I took at Hellier Woods the other day. And what I can do now is go up to the File menu, just go in the drop down, and the Mac should look very similar to the PC on this. And just click on Get Photos from Camera. Okay, so it brings up uh, a menu. I'm going to select the card reader that my photos are in. It has a default of putting it under my pictures folder, which is exactly where I want it to go. But if I wanted to put it somewhere else, I can just hit the browse menu and, and put it in the folder of my choosing. And then I can decide how I want the photos to come in. Okay, you want to think about organizing your photos in a similar way. I tend to keep all my photos organized based on the day, day that they were shot. Sometimes I'll add a uh, descriptive name to the folder that will also describe where I took the photograph. Organizing by your shooting date at least lets you go back and think of time frame when you took the pictures and find them a little bit more easily. And you can see I also have an option of giving a custom name. 
So I'm going to leave it as the shot date because that's the way I have most of my files set up. But when I bring the photos in, I'm actually going to rename them based on the shot date and I'm going to give them a custom name based on where I actually took the shots. So I'm going to put Hell Your Woods. And, and you can organize them what, in a way that works for you. You don't have to organize them the same way I'm organizing them. I shot these photos in RAW. As I kind of mentioned in my blog last week, I probably should convert my photos to, D, to DNG, which is Adobe's digital negative or RAW setting. So I'm going to do that. And then I just hit Get Media. All right, this is going to take a little while, so we'll pause. Okay, my pictures are in, and I'm now on my pictures folder. Let's actually go to the pictures that I just brought in. And that I took these on September 30th, so I'm going to double click on that. And you can see it brings up all of my shots in a thumbnail view. If I want to make the picture somewhat bigger, I can come down to this slider, pretty much make it as big as I want. If I hit tab, I can get a larger view even. It gets rid of my menus on the sides. Okay, I want to bring back my menus on the sides. Okay, and now I can look at my pictures really one at a time. Now, I actually bracket my pictures. Well, actually, there's more than one type of bracketing. You can do white balance bracketing, but exposure bracketing is the most common type of bracketing. I bracket my pictures so I can do HDR work later. I've pretty much got three pictures of every shot. One of them is underexposed, one of them is overexposed, and one of them is the correct exposure. Now we can do a little bit more organizing if we want. We can put keywords in. Let me go back to a smaller thumbnail view. So you might want to do some global keywords. Keywords are a great way to keep things organized. It sets things up so you have a searchable database. So it's always a good idea when you bring your pictures in to maybe throw some keywords in there that will help you find them later. So let me click on the Keywords tab over here. And you can see it's got some preset keywords for you, but I need to put my own keywords in here. So I go over to this tab, this uh, arrow over here, New Keyword. And I'm going to put Hellier Woods. I know it's already in the title. And I'll check that one off. And I'm going to add another one. Rutgers. Because sometimes I want to look for pictures that I've just taken at Rutgers. Okay, and we'll check that one off. All these pictures are of flowers. So we'll check that off. And it's Rutgers Gardens. I could do that as a full word, but I've already got Rutgers in there. So I'm going to add Gardens. Okay, so now if I want to search my photo collection for any of those keywords, it'll bring uh, this set of photos up. Okay, another thing you might want to do is go through, make these a little bigger again, and maybe rate your photos. So I'm going to go through and rate, find some of the pictures I like the most. I don't usually rate every picture, but I'll look for pictures that I really like and rate them. I like this group right here. Um, I'm going to rate them all the same way. And you can see there's, uh, you can't really see it well, 
this lets you rank them under here based on a five star system. I save five stars for my very, very best. Usually when I just go through in the beginning, I rank things four stars. I like this yellow flower quite a bit too. So we'll do that one at four stars. Sometimes I'll go through and ones I really don't like, I'll rate at one star so I can get rid of them later. And I'm not seeing any that are really bad here, so I think I will keep them all. So now if I want to find all the pictures that I liked and gave a four star rating to, I can go over to this rating filter, click on four stars, and we see that I just have the photos that I've rated. Okay, the other cool thing you can do is build a collection. And a collection's great because you can put photos from different folders into it without actually moving the photos on your disk. So it's actually quite excellent if you're trying to build a project for this class, for example, maybe put together some photos for an album or to print, and you're taking some of your favorites from different areas and you want to put them into one group and maybe export them for printing or something like that. So let's build a collection here. And to do that, we just click on this little plus tab, new collection. I'm going to put Hellier Woods. I'm going to go back to my pictures and I see what happened. I have to now go back and find my folder again. So to deal with that, so this folder is here. I'm working with it right now. I'm going to move it over here so it's on my favorites. And that way if I go up to look for something else, I can always come back down and, and find this folder. And if at some point I don't want to work with it anymore, I want to work with a different field folder, I can remove it from favorites. In fact, I'm going to remove my documents from favorites because I don't really need that when I'm working with my photos. Okay, so now I want to put my four star pictures in my collection. And I'm going to actually go up here to look for them. So you see there's a little star section up here. And I can look for all my photos in this group with four or more stars. I'm going to move them to this collection. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I took some pictures in Hellier Woods the other day. And I'm going to look for that folder. Here we go. And I'm going to look for the pictures that I rated four stars the other day. And I'm also going to put them into the collection. It's, now I'll have some, some photos that we can work with. Now let, let's just look at a couple other things too. Now you can see there's a little search box up here. If I put up flowers, all those pictures we just put that tag on are going to pop up. And any other pictures I might have saved with that tag. I like to take pictures of birds. So just as an example, I'm going to show you all the photos I've tagged with the birds tag. You can see it brought up a bunch and I can find them very easily. Okay, so just some real basics on organizing your pictures. All right, let's go back to our collection now. And I want to show you some other things you can see here. Let's look at this photo and look at the metadata. So over here, it'll tell us um, when it was created, modified because it was brought in today. And we changed it. It'll tell me my exposure mode, which was auto bracket, focal length I used, what lens I used, 
the aperture value I use, whether or not I fired flash, what kind of metering I use. So metadata can be a pretty nice feature when we're going back and trying to figure out what we did to take that great picture so we can try to duplicate it again. In the next two class videos, we're, we're going to take a photo and post-process it, first using Adobe Camera Raw and then using Adobe Photoshop. You're going to be launching your photos from Adobe Bridge. So before we start our next couple of sections, find the photo that you want to work with. Remember, your assignment is to take one photo, post-process it using Adobe Raw, which we'll look at it in the next video, and then post-process it using Adobe Photoshop, which we'll look at in the final video in the series. When I've gone through and post-processed them in the subsequent videos, I've taken care not to overwrite the original file. But just as a precaution, before you start working with your file, make sure you find it and save a copy of it so that you'll be able to access it later and compare it to your Adobe Bridge photo and your Adobe Photoshop photo. This is a photo I'm going to use in the next two videos. I'm going to make a copy of it right now so that if I accidentally overwrite it, I'll still have my original. Normally when you want to have two copies of the file, you go up to File and then just save it as and give it a different name. Well, Bridge doesn't have that option. What you can do is go up and go Copy To, and then I'm going to copy it to a different folder. I'll choose my documents. And now if I go back to my computer files and look in my documents, you'll see that that photograph is there. So if later I mess it up when I'm doing our work in Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Photoshop, I can always come back and find the original document. It's probably a good idea for you to do that. Now on to our next video, where we'll learn how to fix this photo using Adobe Camera Raw, and then in our final video, we'll learn how to fix it using Adobe Photoshop.